Hello ladies and gentlemen, we are going to be doing some more VGC 2018 Road to Regionals with none other than the Not Good Team, with Aromatis, Tapabulu, Snorlax, Mega Camerupt, Star Raptor, and the new edition of Mimikyu, which made its debut in the previous episode. Uh, it didn't do so well, but we didn't lose either of those games, so I can't really complain, and I did bring, bring Mimikyu to both of those games. Um, so let's see if Mimikyu can do anything else in, in this video. Um, I did find time to actually record. I'm actually going to be recording this like right now and then immediately taking a shower and then going to bed. So I'm going to be up at uh, like 3.30 in the morning. But we're going to find Luke from the uh, United States, New York. So uh, fairly close. Very, very standard team of uh, Landers, T, the Heatran, Kangaskhan, Feeny, Cresselia, and the Zapdos. And I actually prefer to play against this team so that I can prepare myself to... Uh, be playing against this core a lot at major events and I can only imagine there's just going to be a lot of really really good players using this team because it's very very reliable. Alright, so what do I want to do against this team? Uh, Kangaskhan could very well uh, lead. Um, he's going to want to prevent me from getting up the Trick Room so if the Kangaskhan doesn't lead he's probably going to lead the Cresselius to counter Trick Room. Um, and uh, Ghost DMZ from the Mimikyu is going to be too weak to be able to take out the Cresselia unlike that of the um, the Ega Slash. So, what do I want to do? What do I want to do? What do I want to do? Bulu will be really, really good for his, uh, Bulu actually has a pretty good matchup in this, barring the, uh, barring the Heat Trans, so I feel like I'm going to bring the Bulu. Um, I could lead the Staraptor in the front so I can bait a Fake Out into that and then get up a Trick Room and I can bring my Aromatisse in this. And I feel like I want to get a uh, intimidate down on the Landorus too if he decides he wants to lead that. Um, and Ferium Z really isn't going to be doing too much in this, so I'm bringing the top of Bulu, camera up, camera up, camera up. I'm gonna bring the camera up because it does a lot of damage to all of his Pokemon. Granted, I can be earthquake, I can be muddied, watered. Um, and uh, even Heatran could do a lot of damage with Earth Powers. My plan here is, and every single plan that I have going into any battle, and anyone can kind of see into that, is I need to get up Trick Room. I have two main Trick Room setters on my team. I'm going to end up going with the Aromatis right here. He does lead to Kangaskhan. Um, so he has a pretty good rating. I'm going to uh, assume that he knows exactly what he's doing. If I had to guess what he's going to do is he's going to go for the fake out into the Staraptor and then he's going to probably substitute with his Heatran because even if I set up a Trick Room then he can protect the following turn and even the following turn after that if I go for an Earth Power into it um, I'm still not going to be able to uh, KO the Heatran because he's going to have a substitute up. So fake out substitute from my opponent right here is really really smart. I'm just going to go for the play that I am uh, was initially going to go for if he did lead to Kangaskhan and I'm going to go into my camera up right here. So I feel like he's going to go ahead and go for the fake out into the Staraptor. At least I had gotten Intimidate down into Kangaskhan. Uh, he also could go for the double up into the Aromatisse. Let's see what the Kangaskhan does do here right here. Uh, I think the double up into the Aromatisse and or the fake out into the Staraptor are both really, really good plays, but let's see what my opponent does. He has to go for the fake out into the Staraptor. Um, so, fake out into the Staraptor. Yep. Yeah, so. The Staraptor is just so good about uh, good with, like, oh, and it doesn't go for a substitute, which is perfect, because then I can just go for the Earth Power into that slot the following turn, because I have the availability to go for a Heal Pulse and uh, negative one double edge. Won't even be able to take out my counter up, and then I can just go for the Heal Pulse the following turn after that as well. The Heatran could also um, go into the Feeny, uh, is what I'm also anticipating. Um, so I feel like going for a Heal Pulse or Earth Power into the Heatran is a pretty good call, but the Heal Pulse Eruption is also a really, really enticing play, although it won't take out the Kangaskhan. But uh, let's try to play around that. Going to go for a Heal Pulse right there, and I'm just going to go for the uh, Straight Up Eruption. Uh, I feel like the Heat Train either switches out in the Feeny or protects right here because it doesn't not want to take an Earth Power. And the Earth Power is. I feel like it's really, really obvious because I have a Tapu Bulu in which counters his Feeny. Uh, so he has to preserve the Heat Train. He's not going to preserve the Heat Train, so really, really, really risky play. Incredibly risky play on his part. Um, so, uh, unfortunately, I'm going to be boosting the uh, attacking power of uh, Heatran's fire type of attacks. 
Uh, Kang's gun, yeah, it's pretty bulky. Heatran's gonna go for an Earth Power right there, so I could have very well have went for an Earth Power uh, into that slot. Uh, and then the double edge into what probably is going to be the counter up. No, it's going to be the Aromatis. So it's going to be able to proc my berry. Uh, now we're going to be playing some mind games because do I go for the Earth Power into the Heatran now? Uh, because I don't think the. Um, well, no, the Moonblast will probably be able to take out the Kangaskhan. Um, so let me have any turns of Trick Room do I have left right here. I could also anticipate the Fini coming out and then switch out into my Bulu because what the Kangaskhan could very well do right here is go for the Sucker Punch into the Camera Up, and the Heatran could also go for an attack. Um, so I'm going to go for the Moonblast into the Kangaskhan, and uh, I kind of want to keep my Camera Up in here, but I feel like the Heatran. The Heatran either goes for an attack right now or if he switches in his Fini. But I'm going to go for a safe play of going for a Protect right here because I feel like the, if the Kangaskhan does anything, he's going to... He's not switching out. He's going to go for a Sucker Punch into the camera up. Let's see if I do read into that correctly. And he does go for the Sucker Punch. So we'll be able to take out the Kangaskhan. It's going to no longer have Fake Out Pressure in the latter portion of this game. And uh, interested to see what this uh, Heat Wave... Yeah, because I'm probably in range for a boosted Heat Wave now. I still don't think this takes up my Aromatis, although it's boosted. Yeah. So now I can go... He doesn't have any more priority, so now I can go for... Um, I can actually go for a Sunny Day Heat Wave. I mean, this he's playing, like, incredibly risky with his Heatran not protecting. Could this Heatran very well be a Salt Fest? I'm going to go for a Sunny Day. This, now, Sunny Day Heat Wave take out the Landers. I don't think it will. I do have the Staraptor in the back. Uh, I feel like I have to do something to this Heat Tram, but then he can just call me on that. Um, so, how many turns of Trick Room left right here? Uh, one more turn of Trick Room left. Hmm. In a precarious position right now, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some chip onto this Landris. And then I'm going to go for the Earth Power into the Heatran. He probably will protect now. Yeah, so the Heatran protects now. So really, really good call. Um, playing uh, playing really, really risky. Like, abnormally risky. Uh, I'm not used to be... Like, I'm not... It's definitely not Assault Vest. Um, I'm not used to playing against uh, players like of the high caliber that play this risky, especially in a best of one. Um, so my opponent definitely is getting the best of, uh, the best of me right here. Because now I'm going to be bringing in my Straptor, unfortunately, and we're going to have one more turn of Trick Room left, and uh, that's definitely not good, because then he could just go for a uh, Earthquake. Uh, well, if this is Scarfed, Landers, that'll actually help us out, but uh, still, we're in a really bad position, because uh, he could just go for a Heat Wave, we'll probably be able to take up my Straptor, and uh, I'm forced to basically protect my Top of Bula right here. Although, I could very well go for a... Uh, um, a superpower because I'll be able to underspeed the um, the Heatran, but I really don't feel comfortable that I'd be able to underspeed the Heatran, and um, I think I pretty much just lose this game right here. Um, Punnett, I mean, Punnett played really, really well, and this Heatran could very well be slow Heatran, which underspeeds my top of Bulo. Um, but I think I still have to go for the play of going for a superpower right there, and. Um, I mean, what do I lock myself into? I mean, it pretty much had lost this, lost this game at this point. Because I, if I lock myself into go... If I lock myself into... Um, I'm going to hope that Lando is Scarfed and I'm going to go for the double up into the Heatran. Yeah, so the Heatran is the slowest Pokemon on the field right here. So I could have very well have protected my Bulu. I, I couldn't guarantee that because a lot of uh, Heatrans tend to run uh, speed investment. Uh, and he is not Scarf, so he's going to be able to underspeed my Staraptor and get off a Rock Slide right there. So, good game to my opponent. Um, he played, um, I mean, he played good. He played very, very well. Uh, he protected it when he needed to. I could have very well have went for a uh, Sunny Day Heat Wave on the turn in which I, uh, in which he had protected. Uh, I, I said before he even, I, we even went through with the turn that he was going to uh, protect with his Heatran, and he did. So, I could have went for... Um, uh, I could have, I, actually, I could have switched into my uh, Bulu and gone for like a Moonblast, and Moonblast actually did a lot of damage. Uh, I wouldn't have been able to take too much damage, and I would be able to get a free switch in into my 
Uh, because the, the Aromatis would have went down. I could have gotten a free switch in uh, into my camera up the following turn. He had burnt the Protect on his Heatran, and then I could have followed up the last turn of Turk Room with the uh, Earth Power into his Heatran, and then I could have gone for a uh, Horn Leech into his Landers. I think that was the better call uh, to play it a little bit safer like that, uh, but my uh, opponent playing uh, extremely, extremely risky. Uh, a little bit more risky than I was anticipating, obviously, because you don't want to play that risky in a best of one, uh, but it's a battle spot. We're not really playing for anything except rating, so playing risky really isn't the worst thing. And, of course, it just worked out for him. So, good to get in my opponent. So, we have Goji, the VGC. He's running a uh, rain team. So, this is uh, definitely going to be Mega um, mega Metagross. Uh, he could also lead the rain here as well. Uh, I definitely have to bring the Aromatis in this. Aromatis has a pretty good matchup, too. Uh, it could take an Iron Head from the... Um, could take an Iron Head from the uh, Metagross. Uh, I'm more so worrying about a lead from lead from the the water lead because he'll be able to get a fake out and uh, he could also encore me uh, into uh, trick room as well. Well, no, I'm mean, going to be slower. So if I lead Mimikyu, he can't fake out me. But if I go for the um, trick room with my Mimikyu, uh, he could double up into it. Uh, he can also go for the Encore the following turn because the Politoed will be slower than that of my Mimikyu unless it's a Scarf Politoed. So I definitely have to lead the Aromatis right here. Um, again, the Politoed would be able to... I mean, uh, the... Uh, it's not a not a promising matchup here at all. I'll bring the Bulu. Uh, I think this is the first time I'm ever bringing these four Pokemon together because... Um, Normally, I bring my Staraptor. I, I think this is a, a game that I'm definitely going to have to win under Trick Room. Staraptor's really not going to do much. He didn't do much last game either, even though I brought it in the late game. Um, I'm still bummed about that last game. I think I played it very, very well up until that one turn the Heatran had protected. it. Um, well, let's see how uh, how well we do right here. I think he leads the rain core, in which he does, yeah. Uh, and again, like I had said in an episode before, normally when people... Uh, use QR teams, and they're not very familiar um, with what the team does. Usually what they do is, is they lead with the gimmick of that team. And it, it, Rain's not a gimmick, but, like, you, you, you know what I'm saying. Like, this is a reliable lead. And for people that don't really have much knowledge about this, um, can very well just lead with something reliable, in which this person is right here. Um, so... I think the fake out into the Bulu is necessary because I could go for a Horn Leech into either one of the Pokemon. It'll do a lot of damage. Um, my opponent could may not know what the Aromatis does. Um, I don't really want to protect the top of Bulu because I'll be able to go for the Horn Leech into the Politoed before the uh, Politoed can even attack. And he could also go for the fake out into the Aromatis, anticipating my protect. But I could have just protected right there. He's going to go for an Icy Wind will actually be beneficial to me because it'll make my Tapu Bulu slower than his um, than his Politoed. Because we had just seen right there that my Bulu flinched before the Politoed had attacked. So that's actually really good for me. And now what I can do is I can go for a uh, Sunny Day uh, Horn Leech. And uh, I feel like I want to go for the Horn Leech into the Ludu Colo. Because um, the Politoed, if anything, is inclined to protect or switch out into uh, what will likely be the Metagross. Uh, because either of the Pokemon that you that I have on the field right now really do much to the Metagross. Um, and I can't really switch freely into what would be a s potential Scald. Um, so, I'm going to go for the Sunny Day. That'll reduce the uh, power of uh, water type attacks. And, uh, I'm going to go for the Horn Leech into the Ludicolo because, again, I think the Politoed will protect or switch out into the Metagross. Um, Ludicolo actually switches out. Is that going to be into the Metagross, the Hydreigon? Okay, well, this Horn Leech actually isn't going to, um, it'll, it'll do a decent amount of damage. So, what does the Politoed go for? Uh, probably an Ice Beam into the Bulu, in which I I won't really mind too much. Might also go for the Skull Burn. We'll, we'll hope, we'll cross our fingers that it doesn't get the burn, because then I can go for the Superpower into the Hydra again the following turn. Uh, preserving the Fake Out, which kind of makes sense for the... Now he's going to go for an Icy Wind. Okay, so interesting play. Because again, it's going to even make me slower than it, than it had before. 
Um... So unless he has the Metagross in the back, he could switch the Metagross in on the Politoed. So, what I, I mean, he's gone for two Icy Winds, which is kind of odd, because now you just go for the Moonblast right there. That'll definitely be able to take the Hydreigon. It's going to go for the safe Horn Leech. I'll have two more turns of Trick Room left after this. If he brings in the Metagross, then I can bring in my camera up. Hydreigon Protect. So, the Horn Leech in Grassy Train should be able to take out the Politoed. Um, so... Again, another opponent that's playing really, really um, odd, taking a lot of risks, because um, if I were my opponent, uh, I'd be inclined to switch into the Metagross, probably even the Politoed right there. Uh, I mean, not the Politoed, I'm sorry, the Ludicolo, because Horn Leech wouldn't be able to take out the Ludicolo because it's neutral, and uh, you'd have fake out pressure to falling turn, and then you'd only have to burn one more turn of Trick Room. Alright, so I think we have two more turns of Trick Room left after this. Since he had Icy Wind me both times, um, I am really, really slow. Right now, um, the High Dragon does uh, a lot of damage. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to go for the double up into the High Dragon. If he decides he wants to switch out his High Dragon into the Metagross, I'm at least going to get some good amount of chip on it with the superpower because if he wants to fake out anything, it has to be the Aromatisse because the Moonblast will be able to take out the High Dragon. So, who's it going to be into? Yep, the Aromatisse. So, we're going to go for the Superpower into the Hydragon, and a Hydragon's going to be able to go down. And then I could just switch out into my Snorlax the next turn. Would that be the call? Because we're in... We have the Sunny Day up. It doesn't get the Speed Boost. Skulls will be doing less damage. I could switch in the Snorlax in a... On a, um... Landorus. I do not mind that at all. So I think I'm going to switch out my uh, Tapu Bulu because I want to preserve the... Um, I really do want to preserve the, the Grassy Train because how many turns of Grassy Train we'll have left after this? We will have only uh, one. And then I can switch it in on a potential Earthquake. Uh, I really don't think... I Actually, I don't think that uh, Camera Up does anything in this matchup, but I'm still going to switch it in on my Snorlax. Um... I'm going to Moonblast into the Landers just for some chip. And then, yeah, I'm going to bring the Snorlax. Um, Bulu and Snorlax are my definite win cons in this. Uh, he won't go for a Tech Rage into the uh, Bulu. There's really no reason to. If anything, if he's not like choice, he'll protect right here, in which he doesn't. So we're going to get a good amount of chip onto the uh, Landers. Uh, got a pretty high roll last game, it looked like, because it did a pretty good amount of damage to it. And uh, he's just going to go for Rock Slide. So he's probably choice. And it doesn't look like it's uh, Bandit. Um, <laughs> that gets a crit, so it's definitely not Bandit. Uh, residual healing, which is always nice, um, to the Snorlax and the Aromatisse. Now, um, there is absolutely no way that he can stop me from getting up Trick Room again, unless he wants to go for a Rock Slide Flinch. And uh, I'm just going to go for the Belly Drum right here. He's probably going to go for the Scold and the Snorlax, potentially get a burn. And then if it's Choice, he's going to have to lock himself into Rock Slide. Um, potentially get a flinch on both of my Pokemon. Yep. Yeah, so he's definitely choice. Because uh, Super Power and or Tech Rage would be uh, a better decision right here. Uh, this is not going to KO either of my Pokemon. If he goes into Snorlax, he's going to proc my Berry. I'll get a Berry Drum off, and then I can go for a Heal Pulse, and then a Return uh, next turn. So, looks like we had won this game. And this is not taking out the Aromatisse, especially in the Sun. Yeah. And I don't even think a crit will be able to take out my Aromatisse, because Aromatisse is just naturally bulky on the special side. Yeah. It's not even going to be close enough to even bring me down to my berry because uh, because of the sun. And I think outside of the sun, I don't think it would have been able to take me out, at least at full health, because we weren't at full health right there. So, I mean, that's always really, really good inf information to learn, and it's not Assault Fest Ludicolo as well, which is also really good information to know. Okie doke. So we're going to get up uh, the Trick Room right here. And uh, I actually do have my berry still on my Snorlax. Um, so since it's not Assault Fest, he could very well go for a Protect right here. But again, the um, Rock Slides aren't doing too much to my Snorlax. And if he gets like a Rock Slide crit, he's probably just going to proc my berry, if anything, onto my Snorlax. Well, we're going for a Heal Pulse, so it's not it's not going to have the availability to do that. And, and the Ludicolo is going to go down right here to a plus six return. Okie doke, so we're going to take this game at least, again, just really, really, like, when I lose games, like, it plays on me because I could, 
I feel like I could always do something better uh, in those games that I could very easily win, and we could have very easily have won that first game. It's just uh, misplaying, um, uh, not uh, not necessarily playing all too smart on my side. I could have definitely played that first game a lot safer. Like I had said, I could have you know made some switches and some plays uh, around that Heatran Protect and taken advantage of my last turn of Trick Room. Um, but I unfortunately uh, didn't do that, and I end up losing that game. Um, but again, I just could not anticipate my opponent just playing as risky as he did. Um, <laughs> not protecting against an obvious uh, Earth Power, because uh, with the um, with the uh, camera up on the field, again, it, the, the Kangaskhan was at negative one, and uh, Return and or Double Edge was not taking out my Kangaskhan. Um, so... Uh, the following turn after that, I could have very well have went for a uh, heal pulse and then, like uh, like a heat wave, or even sacked my um, my camera up and then gone for like a sunny day heat wave and then brought in my Tapu Bulu after that, because the uh, the Heatran would have been no more due to the uh, to the Earth Power. Um, the other thing that could have been a possibility as to why the Heatran did protect, and I didn't even think about this at the time, is... Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm laughing right now because I know exactly what this team does. Um, <laughs> uh, um, the Heatran is probably shook a berry. Uh, and I still think uh, a max special attack sheer force boosted earth power that a stab would have still been able to take out the Heatran. Um, so... Again, we have another rain lead right here. Uh, Stack attack is really annoying, and uh, we'd be setting up the stack attack if we had actually uh, set up the trick room. Um, this is uh, what I think Bloom Doom Delamize, uh, also Telekinesis Delamize, because if you Telekinesis, you have Trick Room, and you have I always switch Telekinesis, uh, Power Whip, and uh, Shadow Claw on your uh, Delamize. The Delamize can ally switch, and then you can Trick Room with your. Um, stack attacka, and then you can go for a telekinesis in the stack attacka. Telekinesis throws the stack attacka in the air, and it can't be hit with ground type attacks. So it's a pretty, pretty um, niche technique. How do I want to deal with this though? Because he could lead rain, which would be bad for my camera up. But then I could just lead the camera up against the, against the Delamize and the stack attacka, and then I could just get a lot of damage off into both of the Pokemon because I'd be able to outspeed the stack attacka with the camera up. And again, the Mimikyu really doesn't do much right here, but I'm actually going to bring the Mimikyu. Oh, crap. I See, now, I talked way too much reflecting on the, the last game, the first game that I had had, and uh, we're definitely going to lose this game now because I didn't bring the Pokemon that I wanted to. I wanted to bring, I actually, it wouldn't, it doesn't make sense in your head, but I was bringing the Aromatisse for the rain matchup. I was bringing Mimikyu for his uh, Celesteela, and to get a lot of damage on to something, soak up an attack with the disguise. Um, not the lead I was anticipating. None whatsoever. No. I have no idea what this lead is. So he could very well lead the Salamance right here to get the Intimidate down onto my Mimikyu. And then switch out the Salamance into his... That, that, so that's what I think he's going to do. I think he... Wants me to set up Trick Room for him, he switches out the Salamance into the Stack Attacka. Um, or he could just very well ally switch the Stack Attack, uh, the Salamance from the Fairy type of Tax. Because, uh, I mean, it probably won't take out the Delmice. Oh, man. So, this is pretty annoying. Hmm. I don't necessarily want to. Timer's counting down right here. I want to see what he does. Ally switch is going to be really annoying in this. Exactly. I am not setting... I didn't want to set up the trick room for the stack attack because this play was really, really obvious. Um, Delamize doesn't get um, trick room, but this will at least prevent him from uh, going for an ally switch. Telekinesis, what did I tell you? And we're going to get a little bit of... Actually, that does a lot more than I had anticipated it would do. Um... Stack attack is going to be really, really, really annoying. And I think I should have switched into ah, the Snorlax in the back. Um, so he'll probably go for the Gyro Bowl into the uh, Aromatis. 
So I'm going to go for the Shadow Claw right here. He might actually switch out into his um, Salamence again. Ooh, no. You know what? I'm just going to go for the Taunt right here. I think my player, uh, my opponent will um, read into that. And then go for a um, Gyro Ball into the Aromatisse because this turn, what I think he'll do is go for the Shadow Claw into the Mimikyu to break my disguise so we can go for a Gyro Ball the following turn. Uh, if he doesn't go for the Gyro Ball into the Aromatisse with the Stack Attacker right here, or he could just go for the double up into the Mimikyu. Yeah, so he's probably going to go for the double up into the Mimikyu. And then the Gyro Ball into the Mimikyu. But I'm going to go for the Belly Drum uh, next turn. Um, there's really nothing he can do to prevent me from doing that because... No, he goes for the Rock Slide and the Mimikyu avoids. Huh. Okay. Um, He could Bloom Doom. And then go for the... And then go for the Gyro Ball into the Snorlax. Gyro Ball still will do a lot of damage. That was not Life Orb Stack Attacka. It could be Lonely Stack Attacka as well. Um, I'm going to go for the... Actually, what I'm going to do is... Uh, should I switch out the Mimikyu right here? Oh, man. I have three fairies. They're all going to take a lot of damage from that. I'm going to go for some big damage onto the Dolomite right here. And I'm going to go for the Belly Drum. I don't think the Stack Attacka will read my High Horsepower and then switch out to the Salamance. Yeah, so we're at least before the... I think the Mimikyu... The Stack Attack is going to go for the Gyro Ball into the Mimikyu right here. Because... How, how many turns of Taunt will be left after this? I think I go. For, I have to go for the High Worst Power the following turn onto the Stack Attack because then he can just go for the Talented Kinesis after his Taunt wears off. Because this is not going to take out the Delmice. So I'm at negative one right now with my Mimikyu. But before the Mimikyu goes down to a potential Gyro Ball from the Stack Attack to get a Beast Boost, at least I'll get some big damage off into the Delmice. I think the Delmice is either Grassy on Z with Bloom Doom. Uh, or Berry, and even if you use Berry, he's not, yeah, he's gonna, looks like he's gonna go for a Bloom Doom, into this, which will probably be the Snorlax. So he's, he's ignoring the Mimikyu, uh, which I don't mind, because Mimikyu can do a lot of work to a Snorlax, I'm mean, gonna, to his, uh, his, uh, Salamence under Trick Room. Uh, this Bloom Doom uh, is gonna do a lot of damage to my Snorlax, but it's gonna proc the Berry, and, uh, is that a critical hit? That's not a critical hit. Holy Christ, that does a lot of damage. I, I was not anticipating it to do that much damage. Does the... Does the stack attacker really go for the Mimikyu avoid? So, I needed the Snorlax to avoid right there. I was not anticipating at all the Bloom Dude to do that much damage. Wow. Okay. He's completely ignoring the Mimikyu, which actually is really smart on his part, because, again, it's not doing too much. Play roughs aren't going to be doing too much of the stack attack. I can't take it to Delmize. Now I probably could with the Shadow Claw. Um, I'm going to bring a Tapu Bula here. Again, that's the smartest play. I go for the Superpower um, into the stack attack. What's the Delmize do? I'm thinking, I mean, I could potentially pick up a double knockout right here, so I think he goes for the switch out into the Salamence, but he got a Beast Boost prior with the Stack Attacka, so I think he's going to end up staying in right here. The Superpower won't take out the Stack Attacka right now, especially if it's Chuffleberry, so I'm inclined to go for, because what does the Delmize really do right here? Go for an Iron Hit into the Mimikyu, which I don't even think it has, so I'm going to go for the Shadow Claw into that, probably not going to do too much, but hopefully it allows me to get enough chip into the Stack Attacka in order to get the... Uh, Super Bower, Ally Switch. Oh my goodness. Again, I forgot about that. Uh, this is going to be a really annoying format with Ally Switch. So, that's actually pretty good because I do get the critical hit right there. I don't think, I think the critical hit did matter. But I won't be able to get the double up into the Stack Attacka. So I don't think the Super Power will be able to KO. And he's going to go for a Gyro Ball into my Bulu, unfortunately. And it's Barry. Oh my goodness, so defense boosting, uh, Citrus Berry, okay. Uh, yeah, into the top of Bulu, let's be able to take it out. And throw into the Mimikyu! Because now I could just go for, um, go for another superpower into it. Now granted, I did get a defense decrease, he can go for, he's going to bring in a Salamance right now. Huh. I mean, I, there's no way I can win this game now. But, um... 
Losing the Snorlax was uh, not the play. I didn't anticipate the Bloom Doom to do that much damage. It's good. I'm getting all this information, um, so I don't mind getting this information and losing these games again because it's on Battle Spot. This is when the games don't matter. If I do bring this tour uh, game to a, if I do bring this team to a tournament, I know that the Bloom Doom from the Delmites does that much damage. Um, so he's going to go for probably a Hyper Voice and a Garable into the Aromatis. Uh, Hyper Voice won't be able to take out the Bulu, so I can go for the Superpower. But then again, the, the Salamence is just going to be able to outspeed me. So I think my play right here is go for a Shirk Room. Go for a Super Power right here into the Stack Attack. I'm going to pray that this will be able to take out the Stack Attack. I don't think it will be able to because I got an Attack Drop and he got another Defense Rise. But this is the only play that I really have. I have to hope he goes for um, a Hyper Voice right here because the, the, yeah. because the Hyper Voice won't be able to take me out. And uh, the Double Edge probably would have been able to take me out because I did get a uh, Defense debuff. Come on, Bulu. Come on. Ah, oh, man. That does nothing to the stack attack. A four times super effective attack. And he's just going to go into the Aromatis. Yeah. <laughs> the Aromatis actually survives, but now I'm. Now that we're going to have a stack of attack that can go for Gyre Balls under the Trick Room. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> so. So the Salamence switches out and goes for a Protect right here. Um, does the stack attack uh, anticipate my my Protect from my Bulu? Does it go for the Gara Ball into the Aromatis? I'm just going to go for the Halamere right here. I think the, uh, the Salamence protects or or switches out. Hey, it's going to go for the uh, uh, Gara Ball, so I could have very well protected my Bulu right there. But it didn't matter. Let's see how much damage the uh, Moonblast does to the... Uh, Salamance. If I, if I would have went for a recycle with my Snorlax, I'm looking really, really good because that would have blown the uh, Delamize's. Uh, <laughs> oh, a critical hit. Okay. All right. So I would have, I would have liked to go uh, gone without the critical hit because I would be able to um, determine how much the Moonblast does to the Salamance without a critical hit. So the critical hit was completely unnecessary. I lost the game anyway, and that's. Less useful information than I'm going to be able to get out of this battle, so thank you, game. Gonna even give me the grace of getting off, uh, like getting information out of a uh, calculation. Um, I already know how much the Moonblast does to the stack attack. Uh, it does like 10%. Um, let's see how much the Moonblast will now do to the Pelipper. Because this Skyrim Bowl won't be able to take out my Aromatis. Uh, I think, I think defense stack attack is the way to go because it stays on the field a lot longer. Um, barring special attackers, Feeny would definitely eat this team up because Moonblast for the Salamance, the Muddy Waters for the Stack of Attack. Uh, so, yep, this isn't going to be able to take me out. Uh, let's see how much this does to the Pelipper. Probably not even bringing it down the Focus Ash, but it'll do a good amount. Wow, it doesn't even do half. I'm, I'm kind of, uh, that's interesting that it doesn't even do, uh, more than half. Because your your Pelipers are typically like 252, 252 in speed and special attack with no bulk investment. And um, that's a stab Moonblast. Anyway, we're, we're actually, this is probably like the worst video that we've had so far. Um, I actually enjoyed those battles. I got a lot of good information. Um, played crappy in the first game. Definitely could have played this game a lot better. Uh, the only ways that you lose games in this is your own fault. Unless your opponent plays completely unpredictable. Uh, you can't do anything about that. Um, but we got a lot of good, useful, we got a lot of good information out of this game. Um, I really enjoyed playing those three games. Um, the last game, uh, we finally got to play against the stack of Attacka, which does so much work to my team. Uh, apparently, um, the Snorlax would have definitely been a good call against the stack of Attacka because the, uh, Rock Slides weren't doing much. The, um, Gyro Ball wouldn't have been doing anything. Um, and, uh, the only way he could really hit me with my Snorlax was to go for a Bloom Doom. I said he could very well go for a Bloom Doom, but again, like, I'm calling the plays that they're going to make before it even happens, and I'm still not going with my gut, so I think in the next video, and throughout this entire series, I'm gonna have to follow my gut. 
um, because at this point, that's really all I can do. Um, and I, I didn't. I, I, I called what they were going to do, but I didn't follow my gut. I get to start following my gut. Anyway, hopefully you all enjoyed this episode. I'm probably going to record one more after this so I can have some more content for the uh, rest of the week. So thank you all for watching. Take care and have a great night. Leave suggestions down below with a team that you want me to use because I still haven't put another team together. I have like a couple of ideas. Didn't have a put time to put the team together. Um, still practicing for Memphis, which is like the first my first priority to get some points. Uh, so I don't have time to put the, like, together a 2018 team. Give me some suggestions, and I'll catch you all guys later. Peace.